What's up, guys? Connor, if you could compare and contrast how you've been preparing for the training camp leading into this season, first your first season, what would the differences or similarities be? Yeah, it would just be the uh, positions I got put in, the experience I got to see, um, kind of like what I wanted to work on that I felt like I, I could grow my game in, um, and then taking that back to the lab, you know, wherever I went for uh, my off-season training, uh, come back OTAs, detail it up, try new things, and then come back and uh, try some new things again and uh, just keep detailing and making my weaknesses and my strengths. Yeah. Anything specific you were focusing on in this uh, offseason? Uh, for me, just more film, recognition, um, just being quicker, uh, run past region a lot uh, quicker to that, and uh, then always just uh, touching on my craft as far as uh, the press and off. Uh, off is a big thing, too, for me. Kevin being back there where Bojack was for so long, what's the communication been like? With him, where is it at at this stage, and where would y'all like to get it to? Yeah, it's been smooth, seamless. I don't feel like there's been any drop off at all. I've had no problems with him. Uh, he's a very good communicator, and uh, our whole secondary talks a lot, so there's been really no drop off at all. So we we good. Is that is that hand of yours 100 percent now? I know you were healing, you were playing with it too. Yeah, a little bit hurt, but 100 percent. Yeah, my 100 percent. Yeah, okay. no problems. I mean, the offense obviously looks really different with the targets that are coming to you in the middle of the field. From your perspective, just how different is it having guys like Keenan Allen, Roman Dunes, and Jordan Albright attacking that middle of the field now? Yeah, I would just say it really can get spread out wherever. You know, so we got so many different threats. It can be middle, low, high, outside, inside. Like, it's really wherever he want to put the ball and wherever the play is designed to. So I really just say, like, it can be spread over wherever on the field. What kind of what, – what, what does that do to you? As a, as a slot corner, yeah. all these guys that can do so many different things. Just uh, open up the field, so just really just locking in on my on my job. Everyone just got to, you know, we're just covering more ground and stuff like that. So um, I wouldn't really say it changed anything for me specifically, but, like, yeah, I don't know. We're just more locked in on our guys, our, our, our job, you know, just makes, you know, having better guys around us and stuff like that, just iron, sharpen iron the whole entire time. So just, you know, it puts us on our P's and Q's 24-7. Is it fair to say that like, no, you know going into this year that you belong, whereas last year, I'm, I'm sure you have a ton of confidence, but maybe there's an inch of doubt of how it actually would play out? Belong how so? With, say again? You said belong? Yeah. Like how so? Like me individually or a team? I'm just as good as everybody else out here. I can compete. I can, I can Individually? Yeah. Um, I mean, I felt that way since the beginning. I, I always had confidence in myself to, to know that, you know, this is a spot for me and uh, what I could do and my capabilities. And I feel like my teammates know the same thing around me, coaches, and then, you know, they trust and believe me and I believe in myself. And so, you know, I have the same feelings for, uh, for my, my teammates and coaches and stuff. So I don't feel like it's ever been a feeling of not belonging. It's just, you know, let's get to the action. Let's play, make those plays and uh, build this team to take it to the top, really. We know this defense likes, likes to talk. Is there any kind of scoreboard individually between corners and receivers as to who's winning which matchups or who's winning the day? Uh, we haven't got very specific with it, but, you know, we're definitely competing to see who's going to have the most turnovers, who's going to have the most PBUs. You know, it's always constant competition. Who's going to make the next play? So uh, I feel like as you see our defense, we got a lot of energy. So it would be from the left corner to the right corner to the mic to the D lineman. Like, it's, it just bounces all over, all over. Yeah. Coach Fuss was just saying that um, Coach Hope is the best DB coach in the league. To you, what does he mean that you find most valuable? Uh, I mean, he's been in the game for a long, long, long time. So uh, his knowledge, I mean, he goes, he'll go all the way back 20 years and talk about something and bring it up in the meetings and like, this hasn't changed, like, <laughs> stuff like that. So he'll bring a lot of pointers, uh, very smart coach, IQ guy. So um, I feel like that's what he brings to our room a lot. Tyler, what impressed, what impressed you the most about the way that Jalen handled his situation last year? To come in, to bet on himself, and then to get rewarded for it. Yeah, you know, he just stepped the – he stayed true to himself. That's really the main thing. You know, he's never changed, been any different. And, uh, you know, I, I commend him for that, you know, and he's just been the same leader he's been since he's came in, since I've seen him, since my rookie year for the two years he's been here. And uh, uh, he's just been doing his thing, really. So he's just never changed. So I, I respect that. He's grown. He's he helped the, the rookies, you know. He's just been the same guy he's always been. We talked about you guys having – Repeat the beginning of that, please. Today, Jalen told us that you guys have a bond that, that allows you to communicate without speaking. Yeah. Can you talk about that and how it plays out. Yeah, I feel like when we talk about it a lot in film, or we have so many different reps. You know, I've been with him for two years now, so like we kind of us us both knowing the defense and repping it so many times. It's like we know how we should play this. You know, we don't got to talk and let no one know what we're doing. We just on the same page more the time. It could just be a little slight, like I look or whatever. Like we just know it's on the same type of time. And so I feel like that bond that we have and with other teammates and stuff like that, it just 
it just looks seamless, you know. So it's a uh, it's nice to be able to have that type of team chemistry and stuff like that. During uh, OTAs, Tremaine Edmonds characterized the defense as as being good. He used he used that word. What what would it take to get the defense to a level of great or even elite? Like what has to be happen this year to get there? I say starting fast and just uh, applying that pressure fast and just letting letting who know uh, what kind of, what kind of defense this is. And so. Um, yeah, I feel like just changing to that beginning and uh, hopping on that horse right away and getting and let them know what's up. Uh, turnovers, the defense flying around, starting from the D line to the corners to the linebackers, everyone on all cylinders. So I have a good good confidence in our team right now. I feel that energy for real. Kind of on the topic of chemistry, when you talk about the secondary, the cohesion you guys have, what, what does that do for the mentality of all five guys when you know you've got four proven guys, you know, beside you around you the whole time? Yeah, just a lot of dependability, a lot of trust. Uh, People knowing the assignments, not really worrying about, oh, if I got to help a little bit over here, help a little bit over here. You know, you get to really lock in more on your job and uh, and just know where people are going to be. So I just feel like no one really has to worry about anyone else doing anything because we're all in our spots. You know, we trust it. We repped it. We've been there before in practice uh, in the games, and then it just keeps getting stronger. Evan, what impressed you about uh, Tyree Stevenson's first season and where you think his potential is as he moves into this year? Yeah, I feel like he's just been on a steady growth. Like, it's just been straight up here for real. Um, you know, as a rookie, you know, you're always going to go through your little hiccups and bumps and stuff like that. But he's always been able to take that and turn into lessons and grow. And I feel like you guys saw the most PBUs and picks, you know, starting to come uh, later in the season more and more and stuff like that. And the match he's been, been able to have, been able to lock down some of those guys. And, uh, you know, he's just been growing steadily and consistently. So that's, that's what I commend him for, yeah. Second team defense, a couple of the DBs came away with pass breakups and mm -hmm. had the interception today. Hell yeah. How do you size up this, the secondary's depth that they may, that you guys may not have had the last couple of years and what that could provide you this year? Yeah, just having guys that be able to come in and have no drop off, you know, because we always talk about that, maximizing those reps, uh, whether they're mental or physical and stuff. And uh, that's what those guys do. We get in the film room, we talk, everyone's talking. It's not like it's just the starters or anybody. Like, we're all like one whole group. That's why we talk about the team chemistry. It's not like individual guys. It's a real bond in every position group, so we bring it on to the whole defense. So there's really just no drop-off. Everyone's just trying to make the next play, so everyone's just feeding off each other. So, yeah. Is Tyree talking about being in the punt return competition? Uh, he'd be back there for sure. He, he, I know he wants a few of those. And one of the periods yesterday, you had came off the edge, kind of ended that drive on the play, but would have been a sack. I asked Montez about how y'all work the chemistry off of each other. What are you seeing? What are you looking for when you're trying to time it up, but also your aiming point versus what the end on your side is doing? Yeah. I mean, I know Tez is a monster, so the, the tackle's going to respect him and stuff. So I'm really just playing off of how they how they play him. And so I kind of get to see what, how they move and stuff like that. So cause he, he's very destructive. And so I'm going to just find my angle and pick off, pick off of him, really. Tyler, now that you're in year three, what do you want to accomplish from an individual perspective? What, what do you want to come away with after the season? No, a lot of things. I got a lot of things in the bag that I really want to accomplish. But from from being all pro, pro bowl, more picks, five plus, you know, more, more turnovers and stuff like that. I got I got a lot of things in my head that I want, uh, you know, definitely being healthy and not missing four games and stuff like that. And I know I got a lot more to put on the table. So I'm just excited to really show out this year. Tyler, has it been emphasized to you guys uh, on defense that you may have to be relied on a lot more early in the season because of how many new pieces you have on offense? Say that again. Has it been emphasized to you all on the defensive side that you may have to be relied on a lot more early in the season because of all the new pieces? It may take a little more time to work in on the offensive side? No, I wouldn't say that's emphasized. I feel like we have a standard. Our standard is going to be to be the best, to be number one, and that, that, that's it regardless. Jaquan called you guys in secondary the Avengers. Uh, what do you mean? Do, do you like that nickname? Is that something that's actually stuck? <laughs> I like it. Everyone got their own little personality, their own little juice, a little energy. Uh, we all got nicknames for each other. You know, Flutes gave us all nicknames and stuff like that. So I feel like it's only right to say something like that. Nah, I'm feeling it. Everyone got their own little superpower. Wasn't, they, wasn't that your thing, though? I mean, aren't they? Just, everyone, just, everyone got their own thing. You know, just got Spider-Man, not the only Avengers. You know, like, everyone everyone got their own thing. It's a group. It's a group. It's a group thing. I'm not Avenger? sure if Jaquan knew any other Avengers, though, because he said he's the warrior. Jaquan made one up. He said he's the warrior. and. Like, actually, that's not a real one. I just made it up. Hey, we're the Midway Warriors. we got a bunch of different characters. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marcus, uh, last year, you, you missed a lot of the training camp because of injury, and it kind of took you a while to ramp up. How much better does this feel coming into this camp, but assuming, I'm assuming you're healthy? Yeah, man. Uh, last year was definitely a learning lesson. 
So now I've worked in the off season, just be, you know, prepared and trust what you got, you know, going on. And, you know, um, that was more, you know, uh, an eye opening thing for me last year to come into the, uh, in this camp fully healthy. And also knowing what, you know, the, the practice load that Flute's going to take us through too. So, you know, I know what to expect now. That's eye opening. How much did that hurt you last year? Like e even just your regular season? I mean, y'all weren't so nice to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was definitely something that to where I had to just take, you know, the punches and roll with it to, you know, understand that to where you got to just continue taking it one day at a time and continue growing and continue getting better. You know, uh, the first 11 weeks was definitely, you know, humbling. You know, I feel like it just I was about 75 percent healthy, you know, and then to where I was able to, you know, take care of my body, get some, you know, special treatment, you know, acupuncture and all that stuff. And then I was able to get more, more balanced and then able to have my feet underneath me. To that point, DeMarcus, like from the outside in coming into this offseason, <coughs> The DN opposite Montez Sweat was talked about as being a need on this team. Do you take those types of things as, as a slight, as a shot, or anything like that in terms of? Nah, nah, I'm, I'm used to it now. Montez was talking about just the benefit of having training camp, a full off season to work with you with different signals and stuff. How are you seeing that benefit already? Chemistry. I mean, just from everybody, to all the pieces that we added on to it, you know, it's good to, you know, um, just get together. You know, him and I spent a lot of off season, a lot of time together in the off season. Marcus, a lot of guys on this defense have talked about making sure you get off to a fast start. For yeah. Well, what is your sentiment on that and, and why that's become so important with last year as a bit of a reflection? Well, we started to catch momentum as a team, you know, throughout the season last year, and we finished strong even though we didn't get the win we wanted to against Green Bay and everything and against Cleveland as well. But I believe that's why we practiced in the morning too. Me and Flew's talked about that too. I think that would, uh, that would help us get that fast start, you know, in the, in this season so that's why we can drop out on, on teams early and then – Continue growing and growing, growing that chemistry, and then finish it strong, even better than we did last year. Consider the momentum that you guys built late last year. What do you sense carries forward from last year to this confidence. year? Confidence. Demar, you talked about being seventy-five percent healthy last year. Going into this year, assuming that you're healthier, what kind of expectations or pressure do you put on yourself to perform at your highest level? Just continue being effective, effective because you know you can be a dangerous man if you can win outside and inside. So you know having that, you know. You know, that, that mindset and, the, you know, those goals, you know, that, I believe that tour that can help, you know, uh, not only me, but help the team as well. When they signed you, that was like a big focal point that you had the inside-outside flexibility. How do you think that's going to translate to your usage and where are you aligned this year? It's all on me, you know. If I'm hot outside, try to keep me outside. But to where, you know, we got great edge rushers, Tommy Robinson, Jacob Martin, you know, um, a lot of guys that to where they can rush outside and me. You know, you get those guys on the field too, and then push me inside, and you got a lot of you. You continue putting pressure on the quarterback and everything, playing selfless football. We saw a little bit of that in the two-minute drill today, playing next to Javon and having that sort of length inside. What does that do to an offense? I mean, when you got a guy that's six six, and you know, he kind of he kind of take away the G takes away the check down. You know what I'm saying? You know, putting his hands up. So, you know, uh, that's definitely a good you know add on. You said that you were you're used to it by now, hearing about. Last year, bringing in another, bringing in Gakwe, and then this year you're hearing it again, and that that you're used to it. But is there some part of you that says, "This is what I was brought here to do"? That it's I got this, and now I'm 100 percent healthy. No, man. I mean, the circle I have around me, you know, it definitely you know benefits because I know who I am as a person. I know like what I have to do. You know what I'm saying? My dad has to say, "If you listen to what people are saying, you're not working." Marcus, Eric Washington's obviously a defensive line guy. Have you noticed him putting his fingerprints on anything or adding any new wrinkles that will help you and the defensive line specifically? Yeah, man. I mean, Coach, he, he, when he walks in the room, you know what I'm saying, you can feel his presence, especially having that military background. And when I was able, I was at the SAC Summit this offseason, got to meet up with Von Miller, Ebenezer, Daquan Jones, got to, you know, understand, you know, his philosophy and everything, getting, you know, other players' information, everything. It all, you know, was surreal to be able to, like, know, have to have this guy on this team. And then just, you know, the things, you know, the confidence he speaks in me and see that he sees my potential, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, 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 can, I thank God for him. How beneficial, was it to, God, how beneficial was it to attend that for you? Good. Great question. I mean, uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, Cam Jordan, I learned a lot from him because him and I have this specific, temp similar body types, more of a power guy, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's something I needed to pick his brain and understand. And even the details I learned from Max Crosby too, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that definitely motivated me leaving Vegas to, you know, come back, you know, here and come share what I know and apply it as well. 
Marcus, after spending a year with Jervon and, and kind of understanding him, what do you expect out of him this year when you guys really need him to take that leap as a three technician? He's a football like me, you know what I'm saying? He know how to work. He definitely determined in everything. So whatever I know, I owe. And whatever, you know, he, you know, whatever I can help him tweaking, making sure he's not overworking, you know what I'm saying? And making sure that to where the details, that to where they can help him become a, you know, an elite pass rusher. I don't mind pointing to him, you know, because when he's, you know, when he's creating havoc, you know what I'm saying, that, does, that helps me, you know, get the pressure off me. I get more one-on-ones, you know. How do you view the opportunity for yourself individually on the outside with Montez being here and, and being, in theory, better this year <clears throat> and you being fully healthy? I mean, obviously when Taz came in, that definitely, you know, he, he did demand a lot of attention, especially when he started creating havoc and, you know, his team started sliding him and chipping on him and that freed me up. So got to compliment that and continue, you know, working, you know, can't put it all on him. I got to show up then to where obviously you got to make a, you got to make the OC, make a decision. And you're in a better position to take advantage of that now. Absolutely. With, um, with the way this team finished last year and the additions they made in the off season, how does the, your anticipation of being on a winning team, if not a playoff team, compare to like other teams you've been on, like at this point of the season? Is there any great or is there, you know, is there... Nah, I don't, uh, nah, I, I, I don't, I don't really have any expectation, you know. Um, we definitely gotta, you know, continue playing good football and taking it one game at a time. You know, everyone has to develop from special teams, offense, offense, and defense. What do, you, what do you like the most that you've seen so far defensively? I mean, you, the the intensity and the confidence you can see it. You know, from rolling off from being the number one run stopping defense, and then what tied in takeaways last year too. You know, you, we have that confidence, and you know, now it's been the number one total defense now. What's the stability? What's the stability do for you, Marcus, uh, coming back and being on the same team two years in a row after changing teams? It's a great question. It was a blessing this offseason knowing where I was going to be home at. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, when you have that, when you have that, you know, that security, you know what I'm saying? That, that helps you, you know, stay focused on the main thing. Marcus, you talked about a vocal leader. How have you kind of tried to step that up with uh, Eddie and uh, uh, Justin being gone this year? I was a vocal leader last year. You know what I'm saying? Have you as you? Increased at all with them leaving? No, I mean I feel like uh, this year, you know, I'm pretty much kind of just letting a lot of guys, you know, uh, fill you know their leadership roles instead of me kind of just like being the one always to, to speak up. So I let KB, you know, I mean Kevin Byer, he speaks up, you know what I'm saying? When you uh, Tremaine and all those other guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, when it's my time to talk, it's my time to talk. You know, I feel like now it's all about me perfecting my craft. You know, putting the markers first. Marcus, Marcus, you talked about being available, learning from other players during your time in the league. How open and available do you make yourself to younger players who are hoping to grow their game as they're just entering the league? So here's the thing. A lot of vets can say I'm always an open book. You ask the younger players how they is about me. You know, I'm the type of person that well, I want you to feel comfortable. I, I sit down, what's your name? You know what I'm saying? Getting to know people because that's the type of leader I am. Being in the manner of the people and learning how to, you know, that's how you really make people comfortable. That's how you make, you know, teams trust. You got to trust you to come on the field. You know, it's not no just... Hey, let's go. You know what I'm saying? This guy actually got, got to know me. You know what I'm saying? And that makes a difference. When I when I break it down, I break it down on family every single time. Several of your teammates, several of your teammates have picked you to be uh, one of the potential stars at Hard Knocks. I'm sure you're not going to you know go out your way with none of that. But are you looking forward to what that might look like in terms of how you are presented on the show? Just be myself, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, before Hard Knocks was here, I'm still the same Demarcus. You know, when Hard Knocks here, so that no one can't say, "Oh, he's acting or he's doing something." No, no, no. Friend, we've been hearing you since you've been here, but I'm just saying, are you looking forward to what that? <laughs> are you looking forward to what that looks like when it's on TV for everybody to see? No, 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 man. I mean, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Demarcus, you've played with a lot of quarterbacks so far in your career. What what has struck you about Caleb uh, so far early on? I don't like how the media made him, and not you guys. I'm talking about the LA guys, the, the just the mainstream LA media and all. So I don't like how they made him this type of prima donna type of things and all that stuff. When you got to know this kid and you sit there, sit down and talk with him in the cafeteria and all that stuff, it's just like no, nah, you just sit down and get to know him, you know. So, uh, you know, good good kid, man. You know, I can't wait to see what he does. Special arm talent. And um, this offense, you know, got so many good weapons around him. You know, it's, you know, the sky's the limit for that kid. How much did you pay attention to, I mean, clearly with the national perception of him coming in, was that stuff during the offseason as his team made a quarterback switch that you were tapped in on? That's a question. I'm so sorry. With, with Caleb, like, I mean, clearly you saw what was out there, the narrative about him. How tapped in were you into, you know, before he gets here being your teammate, just like reading all that stuff about him? Right. Well, I didn't really tie, tie into it because, you know, 
Y'all don't understand. Like I started, I took a month off for the for the first time. I usually only take two weeks off. And my first question I got is, "What are we gonna do at quarterback?" You know what I'm saying? Like it was so serious. Like February first when I when it was when I started, and it's just like so. Then I mean, you had to like you had the comparisons and everything. And you know when I got like with anybody, you know, like and I, I'll wait to get to know you myself. You know what I'm saying? When we sit down and talk, and I I use my discernment to see you know you know if your spirit real or not. So. um I didn't really, I didn't really, po- I didn't really focus, you know, into it. You know, I just, I, I had to get to know him himself, you know. What was the biggest misconception about him? See, Caleb's confident, you know, and I feel like people can use that as cockiness, and that's where I feel like people wrong at. You know, you want anyone to be confident in what they do. You know, in y'all job, y'all got to be confident. You know, you want a confident boyfriend, you want a confident girlfriend, you want a confident husband, you want a confident wife. So you know, like. You know, I feel like some people can, like, misconcept that. So, Marcus, you mentioned KB's leadership a minute ago. What, what is the thing that you respect most about the way he acts this whole thing? Uh, I feel like, you know, with him and Brisker back there, you know, there's just, you know, they got the – they've been there before, you know. And me being with KB with Tennessee, I already knew what type of, you know, leadership he was going to bring and everything. Now it's just, you know, us leaders just, you know, you know, hey, bro, like, you know, this is yours too. You know, you can speak up. You can do whatever you want. Be yourself. Marcus, of course, we we always uh, hear you on the field. Always it's like a necklace, man. I appreciate you. You change the chain. We understand. <laughs> uh, but uh, you, we always hear you drive back and forth with the offense. Did you kind of get the reaction today that you've been looking for over the past couple of years? Damn, started John yes. back a little bit. Yes, I did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. You know because they had a little brother. You know what I'm saying? And then you picking on me, picking on me. You want them to swing back. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I does I do that. And that's the thing about my leadership. You know, I try to get to know the offense and special teams as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm a team leader, not just a leader. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, being able to, you know, get to those moments, you know, being their brother, you know what I'm saying? And also being there, you know, being a bully, knowing how to like, you know, get to know them. And when you're doing all that stuff, when things hit the fan, you know what type of person you're gonna get out of them. You know what I'm saying? So bullying works. <laughs> <laughs> on the football field, right? <laughs> Tevin, is, is there a, a vocal leader in the O-line room right now, would you say? Uh, I'd say it would probably be, I'd probably say it would probably be Ryan Bates being the vocal leader. Like, uh, he's more of our, uh, the more vocal guy out here, like you're asking right now. Yeah, so I'd say probably Ryan Bates. Luke has kind of left the void there that he's stepping into. Is that fair? Yeah. What has it been like for him? He's a new guy to come in and be that vocal leader right away. How long did that take him to get up to speed there? Uh, not too long, you know. It seemed like he came over whenever we just traded him. He just fit right in, and uh, you know he hasn't been anything but himself. And we, as a whole line, just love him. So, what's the process like for you as you know the team kind of tries to determine Ryan Bates, Colton Shelton, these guys swapping in and out? What's that process like for you as the offensive line as a whole figures out that position? Uh, you know, I love both guys. You know, as uh, as they're still competing like, and everything, and uh, you know it's different by fits. Uh, Terminology, which I say on the same terminology, so that's going to be easy, and just different body types of uh, those two, and just being able to come together and understand, uh, like uh, maybe Coleman likes to slide a little bit more uh, on a pass pro, and then Ryan likes to slide a little bit less. It's like it's like finding that little nuances between each other and understanding what, what's yeah. going to go on. Ideally, is there a point in the process where you would like to kind of get that settled so you can continue to work on that chemistry with? Murph's going to be uh, next to you in the regular season? Uh, but my pay grade. You know, I love both guys. So, I mean, whenever, whenever it happens, it's for the upstairs guys to determine. How does the strength of the quarterback center exchange affect a left guard, though? Uh, you know, I'm just out here to do my job, I guess. And, I mean, between those two, what happens is what happens. I mean, I just try to focus on what I can control. Tevin, Tevin, at, Tevin. At, at this point of your career, do you have any different game plan or approach into the season to make sure that, A, this is your best season, and B, that you're available all season? Uh, other than spending a lot more money on my body than I ever have, uh, that's really about it because I, I'm just, like, starting to hammer more. Like, I'm going to talk to my PT guy. I'm going to see if he comes out twice a week, uh, make sure I get my body going into the game day. Uh, I'm trying new chefs out and making sure we can uh, make sure I keep my inflammation down in my body, make sure nothing's bumping bruises. Uh, I'm going to start looking into more massages. I'm not a big massage guy, but uh, I'm going to look into 
probably seeing if that would uh, be beneficial as well. Are you up to the start? Is the best you felt at this time, you know, at this point in training camp since you've been here? Yeah, it has. What spurred this investment back into your body, into your nutrition and everything? Like, like what was the genesis for that for you? Genesis me. <laughs> like, what was the beginning? What made you decide, I want to do this? Uh, I'll say just basically the future of what I want. And, uh, you know, I made it vocal many times that I want to be here on the Chicago Bears and uh, whatever I need to do of uh, how much I need to pay forward to get it back in the back end. Uh, and that's the determination I have to keep doing that and understanding that I need to spend more uh, short term to get more long term for myself and my family. What's the budget for that? Like, how much do you have to spend? And is it double what you used to? Or can you put that into context for us? Uh, so if I have twice a week, it's probably be in that shift. Almost double. Yeah, yeah. I'll say almost double. Uh, don't tell them that because it might drive the price up on me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to I try to stay well within my means of that and understanding that I do have a newborn formula. It's not cheap. I figured out very quick. <laughs> uh, diapers aren't cheap as well, and wipes. Wipes go out like a like that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things that are in my budget now that was not in mine before. That I'm trying to uh, make it make it more reasonable because, like I said. More now, I can have a lot more later. So we talked the to you, when we talked to you in the spring. You said that your side had reached out to the Bears, but you hadn't heard anything on the contract. Do you have an update on where things stand right now? Uh, last I was told, I gotta wait until after bye week to reconvene about it. I'm sorry, I wait until after uh, bye week. Yeah, so two we can reconvene about it. Okay. Tell what was the process of knowing? Which things in your repertoire of you know improving your body, spending more money, of knowing which things had to change, whether it was nutrition, exercising, which th what, what was the process like knowing that certain things had to change and certain things you know could stay the same? Well, uh, you know, I'm getting older. Uh, 18 years old, I used to hop on that field, no stretch, nothing, easy, no matter what. As I started getting older, I'm like, all right, maybe I need to not have fucking like, uh, Wendy's on Tuesday or before practice or something or. Whataburger on Wednesday or college or something, and starting to understand that these meals and these this money I'm spending on my body actually is beneficial for me in the long run, and I can actually have a longevity in uh, this sport. Tevin, the uh, cadence issues that you guys were having with Caleb mm -hmm. back in June, I guess May June. Oh, we all we, it's all ironed out. I was out. ask if you felt like that's solved. Yeah, it's ironed out right now. We're doing really good on it, and hopefully, we'll keep on continuing growing off that. What's impressed you lately with Caleb? Uh, pocket presence. Uh, you know, we have a three and a five and three and a five on the other side and they both rush outside. He understands like, oh, wow, they can, he could just step up because all their cover two drops. And it's like, oh, wow, I can step up 20 yards, just easy. I mean, he's just understanding where, uh, he's like sliding in the pocket, like seeing the pressures and everything. So I'm being really impressed by that. I know y'all not in pads yet, but what's been your early assessment of Javon Dexter in terms of his growth? From last year to this year, as you go up against him, uh, I haven't been up against him yet. So I say this is our first, uh, first like uh, shells practice today. So I mean, I haven't went up against him yet. So I wish I'd give you all of that. So what's been your early? It's like obviously early. What's been your impression of uh, DeAndre Swift though? Like he seems like he has a little extra juice, another gear that maybe the other backs might not have. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I'm very impressed by Swift right now, and uh, it's a lot of. Uh, Hard nosed ball he does. It's it's very impactful what he's gonna do for offense. And he's very quick, speedy, and he can he can run over you if he wanted to. So that's a lot of things that he brings to the offense. So I'm very excited about it. Do you feel like early on the ball is coming out a little bit quicker on the offensive side? You're not having to hold your block nearly as long? Uh for me, pass pro feels like an eternity. Like it's just like it's what it is, what it is. I'm just back there just holding on for dear life, I feel like sometimes. Uh <laughs> Whenever that ball gets out, we're just covering down as fast as we can, hard we can, no matter how long it is. And our job is to be there to protect Caleb, and I'm just there to do my job however long it takes. So this was praising the operation of the offense, saying things are coming along, fewer pre-snap penalties. How do you assess where the, just the operation is at this point right now? Uh, yeah, I do say we're coming along. I mean, we have a long way to go because it's like day three of training camp. But uh, I feel like we're ahead of the curve of where we were last year. And we're definitely growing together and understanding what uh, what this offense is going to go be. And uh, this was a 2024 season, 25, 2024, 25 season. 
Is that surprising? Urgent. Given you got a new OC and a new quarterback, bigger ahead of curve. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's why, uh, like even going to OTAs, you know, when we had the little iron and out of uh, cadences and pre-snap penalties, uh, we came back at training camp, hit the ground running, haven't had a problem since. So, uh, so Marcus Walker knows that the <clears throat> offense matched the intensity of the defense today. What has been your impression of the way the offense has handled the intensity of the defense and been trying to match their intensity? Uh, yeah, I feel like we've been trying to keep up with the defense. Not really like keep up with the defense, but uh, match their intensity, like you're saying, and because you know this is a top ten defense without doubt. From D line to the safeties, like they're 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 going to be a great defense. They're going to be great this year, and for us to match that intensity, it's going to be good for us because that means we're going to push ourselves to be try to be a top ten offense as well. And if we keep on going back and forth, we're just going to make each other better. Did the contract that Quinn Miners got to get your attention? Yeah. And about just I, possibilities. No, I, tra I trained with Quinn back in uh, Exos. Uh, he's a really good dude. I like him. I love to see him get paid, and. I'm very excited for him, and you know that's it's good for overall for the guard market by itself. So the defense calls themselves the defense calls themselves the Avengers. The Avengers. Do you feel like uh, you guys have a group of superheroes on the offensive side as well? Uh, we might have to make some up. I don't know, I don't know. We haven't we haven't convened yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.